Hello everyone, today's video will be on cancers of lung. So let's get started. Here I have given the classification of lung cancers where WHO has classified the lung tumors as epithelial, neuroendocrine, tumors of ectopic tissue, mesenchymal and hematolymphoid tumors. Talking about the pathogenesis of lung cancer, well, the lung cancer is initiated either by the activation of oncogene or the inactivation of tumor suppressor genes, which leads to uncontrolled replication and growth of cells in the lung. There are several factors that may lead to these mutations and they may be inherited from parents or acquired by exposure to carcinogens. Smoking is the primary risk factor for lung cancer and is intricately involved in the pathogenesis of many cases of the disease. Approximately 85% of cases of lung cancer are directly attributable to smoking habits and it is also associated with 70-90% to 90 of deaths due to lung cancer. Mutation in KRAS proto-oncogene accounts for 10 to 30% of lung adenocarcinomas, whereas the mutation in the EML4 ALK tyrosine kinase accounts for 4% of non-small cell lung carcinomas. Epidermal growth factor receptor plays a role in the regulation of cell multiplication, apoptosis, angiogenesis, and tumor invasion. Genetic mutations that lead to the upregulation of EGFR are commonly observed in non-small cell lung carcinoma, which explains the use of EGFR inhibitors in the treatment of the disease. Other genes that are thought to play a role in the pathogenesis of lung cancer include LKB1, PIPIC3CA, BRAF, etc. Coming to signs and symptoms of lung cancer, well, chronic cough, hemoptysis, wheezing, chest and bone pain, chest infections, nail clubbing, respiratory, P, hoarse voice, difficulty in swallowing, shortness of breath, and unexplained weight loss are few signs and symptoms of lung cancer. There are many paraneoplastic syndromes associated with lung tumors. I have enumerated those paraneoplastic syndromes here. You should learn these syndromes as these are important for your exams. Coming to squamous cell carcinoma of the lung, well, it is a malignant tumor arising from the epithelial cells with squamous differentiation demonstrated either immunohistochemically or morphologically with the presence of keratinization or intercellular bridges. It can be keratinizing or non-keratinizing and subtypes include solid, cystic, papillary, pseudoglandular, alveolar filling and sarcomatoid and spindle cell change. It can present in any site of the lung or bronchus, but it more commonly involves the central region. The metastasis is frequently observed. Mediastinal lymph nodes are the primary site. Hematogenous spread occurs to distant organs in which bone is the most common and liver is the second most common. You can appreciate the gross of the squamous cell carcinoma in the lung here shown by the broader arrow and keratin pearls and squamous neoplastic cells in the micrograph. Non-small cell lung carcinoma with glandular differentiation, mucin production or pneumocyte marker expression are the features of adenocarcinoma of the lung. The most essential feature is that it is most prevalent non-small cell lung carcinoma and five main histological patterns are SNR, papillary, micropapillary, lipidic and solid. It can be of mucinous and non-mucinous types. It's positive for TTF1. Upper lobe is involved more than lower lobe and it is more commonly peripheral than central. The metastasis brain is most often the only site for metastasis. Other rare sites are bone, liver and sometimes adrenal. Risk for brain metastasis increases with the tumor size and lymph node involvement. Here, this is you a can gross see the gross and micrograph image of, of lung adenocarcinoma, and you can appreciate the in the micrograph the, the SINR structures lined by highly pleomorphic neoplastic cells. Pleomorphic neoplastic cells. This is a gross and micrograph of. The small cell carcinoma is a high grade neuroendocrine tumor that arises in the hilum of smokers with a poor prognosis and no current targeted therapy. 
it could be central bronchiolar hyalur and rarely a peripheral nodule the pattern is submucosal growth it can metastasize to liver adrenal bone bone marrow brain often widespread metastasis is present the key feature is nuclear molding and salt pepper like chromatin in small tumor cells immunohistochemically synaptophysin chromogranin a and cd56 are positive and ttf1 is negative in 15 to 20% of the cases here you can appreciate the gross image of small cell carcinoma and the micrograph which shows small neoplastic cells with nuclear molding and crushing artifact at places talking about the carcinoid tumor of the lungs well the pulmonary carcinoids are well differentiated neoplasms with neuroendocrine differentiation further divided into typical and atypical carcinoids neuroendocrine tumors grade 1 and 2 the classification is based on mitotic count per 2 mm square and the presence and absence of necrosis The typical carcinoids are classified according to mitotic count less than 2 per 2 mm square, the absence of necrosis, and a tumor size more than 0.5 cm. The histological features include neuroendocrine growth pattern and monotonous tumor cells with salt and propagramatin and inconspicuous nuclear and moderate to abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm. The treatment is based on surgical resection and the prognosis is excellent. Here you can see the gross image of the carcinoid tumor in the lung and also you can appreciate the micrograph which shows typical carcinoid pattern large cell carcinomas well these are malignant poorly differentiated epithelial neoplasm of lung composed of large atypical cells no morphological or immunohistochemical evidence of glandular squamous or neuroendocrine differentiation is seen it, so it's a diagnosis of exclusion diagnosis can only be made on resected tumors here you can appreciate the gross and micrograph of large cell carcinoma Coming to the treatment part, well, the squamous cell carcinoma or the adenocarcinoma are treated by surgery, chemotherapy, or radiation therapy. There are certain specific kinase inhibitors and checkpoint inhibitors now available for the treatment, and the small cell carcinoma is mainly treated by radiation therapy and chemotherapy. Most lung cancer patients present at a higher stage, so the prognosis is poor, and the overall for five-year survival rate is approximately eighteen point seven percent. I hope you all have understood the lecture well keep watching my videos and do subscribe to the channel bye for now